Hello everyone. The fourth episode of Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari's Golshan e Raz, The Rose Garden of Mysteries. As promised in the previous episode, in this episode we are going to talk about um, the prophets, specifically the prophet of Islam and his position in this cosmological picture. In the previous episode, we had Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari say that there are two arcs. One, the descending arc, the manifestation that brought all the multiplicity, and it got down to the point where human being is. So human being was the reference because of his or her all comprehensive nature or comprehensive constitution. And from this reference, there was another arc, another journey, the ascending journey, the ascending arc. Um, the reference being the human being and the goal, the destination being the unity with the Almighty. Having come to this world through the divine manifestation, through the divine emanation, the human being should start a journey, a journey back to the origin. To quote Plotinus, a journey back to the fatherland. In the Ennads, Plotinus tells us that having come to this world from the higher land, the humanity has lost the track of things of high values. But he also tells us that this is not hopeless. You can start your journey back to the fatherland, back to the origin, by awakening to two things. One, realizing the high value of things in the higher world. And two, realizing the low value of the obsessive engagement with the empty things here below. Of course, he's not saying that everything in this world is empty. All he's arguing for is that to live a fruitful spiritual life, to go back to the fatherland, you should get only what is necessary for you in this life. Live a simple life, do enjoy material life, but only as much as it is necessary. Continue your way, continue your journey back to the origin. We also saw in the previous episode that Sheikh Mahmoud Shabastari is also painting a similar picture, a similar journey. Plotinus named it an inner retreat, a soaring, but a soaring inward. And the same goes for Sheikh Mahmoud Shabestari. Let's see in this episode what role the prophets, especially Prophet Muhammad, plays in this journey. So continuing with the poem that we were investigating in the last episode, we have this line. A rough translation would be, in this journey, the prophets are like the caravan leaders. They are the cause and the leader of this caravan. But what kind of caravan is it? And more importantly, why is the Sheikh using this simile? Before I explain that, first, it is better to understand the purpose of the Prophets. In the Aristotelian ethics, we had, if you want to live a moral, ethical life, you should stay away from the two extremes, the negative extreme and the positive extreme, and you should always be in a middle ground. You shouldn't be too brave as to put yourself into danger, and you shouldn't be timid as to fear everything. You should be in the middle ground. You should be brave, moderately. So, uh, in the Aristotelian ethics, we have two extremes, one on the right, one on the left, and we have the middle way. And Aristotle tells us that this middle way is the path that will take you into uh, living an ethical, moral life. Interestingly, Islamic philosophers take the same framework. They modify it slightly in saying that yes, there were two extremes, one on the right, one on the left, and there is a middle ground. And that middle ground they introduce as being the law of Sharia, that is the divine law. So the divine law, the principles that are stated in the divine law, put you and keep you in that middle ground that helps you live an ethical life. So looked at it from this aspect, 
uh, the religion and here we are of course talking about islam but the whole picture is the same with christianity and judaism the sister religions the three sister religions um, so uh, look at it from this aspect the religion is a framework to live an ethical life so in this picture there are two extremes for example being obsessively engaged with the world on the one side the first extreme and on the other dispatching yourself completely from the world going and living on the mountains islam does not accept this islam sets the middle ground he says well if you want to be a sheikh if you want to be a mystic live in the society the inner aspect of islam be it mysticism whether we call it mysticism or sufism is a social system you have to be in the society and live a social life you need to live as a community so between the two extremes comes the middle ground living a moderate life and according to islamic philosophies that middle ground is the divine law and who is the leader in this path here is where the prophets come into play god sends the message sends those rules through prophets and he makes sure that those rules are explicated and executed properly through the prophets so the prophets are the leaders in that path so this is exactly what the sheikh means when he says on this path on this journey the prophets are the leaders so basically he is referring to that moderate path the middle ground in the aristotelian ethics so the prophets are the leaders in this path the word sareban in persian means leader the second meaning of this word is the leader of a group of camels now there is an elegant point here and the commentator the grand commentator of sheikh mahmoud shabestari who is lahiji uh, explains it perfectly he says that in ataha eid in makkah city camels are sacrificed and this camel is called the badana and interestingly the human soul the human psyche nafs in arabic that has gone through some disciplined difficulties some principled difficulties that is going through let's say an esoteric life limiting yourself with what you have and focusing your attention upstairs in the spiritual world rather than being obsessed with the material world still using the material world enjoying it but as much as it is necessary living that difficulty the nafs the soul that journeys on this path and goes through this, that difficulty is also called with that name that camel's name badana so the parallel here is this in the same way that in that Eid, that camel is sacrificed if you want to get to the final destination that is the union with the almighty you need to sacrifice some things in your life you need to sacrifice your soul not in the literal sense but in the sense that you have to fight with your soul not to be obsessively involved with the material things again with emphasis on it you still need to live the material life all this mysticism is hardcore against living a complete aesthetic like living on the mountains we are talking about a soul that resists that all the desires that is receiving we are a being with tremendously unquenchable desires and we cannot and should not satisfy them all some desires take us up outside the ethical framework this is also the same thing that aristotle is talking about so this caravan here it could also be interpreted in that way that way we are a group of camels like simile that are guided by prophet so that we can sacrifice that those extravagant um, desires and get to that final destination and the next line goes like this وزیشان سید ما گشت سالار همو اول همو آخر در این کار and amongst them that is the prophets our sir that is the prophet Muhammad صلی الله has become the leader has become the forefronter همو اول همو آخر در این کار he is both the first and the last on this path now in the divine manifestation the prophets have lost their self not an annihilation not in a negative sense but in the sense that they lose that duality 
the duality that there is a God and there is me. So the self goes away. They lose that self. And this is also the goal of the mystics, and the people who are travelers on this path. So after going through that uh, losing the self, fana in Arabic and Persian, they get to subsist in it, not just a glance coming back. And that is called baqai billah, subsistence in God. Being in that station, prophets are perfect manifestations of the Almighty. The difference is this. Prophets have ranks, and according to this cosmological picture, some prophets are the locus, the mirror that reflect a number of divine names and qualities. The prophet that reflects all the divine names and qualities according to this cosmological picture is the prophet Muhammad. So in this framework, he alone is the locus where God shines most perfectly. According to the commentator Lahiji, um, Nabi, that is a prophet, is someone who gives news, who informs of the divine names and qualities. And the primary and essential informer is the intellect capital. So the intellect has prophethood. And this is the interesting part. Every prophet has an aspect, has a manifestation of that prophethood. So that intellect, aqlakul in Arabic, the intellect capital, has eternal prophethood. But the prophets have temporary prophethood. And if you remember from our previous videos, the intellect, the aqlakul, is the reality of the prophet Muhammad. So looked at it from this perspective, all the prophets had aspects, had manifestations of that eternal prophethood. And Prophet Muhammad's reality is that eternal prophethood, which is why he is about the others in the prophethood rank, which is why he came last through whom the perfection flowered. Here is another interesting point. Um, in considering the divine names and qualities, every name is both the essence and different from the essence the essence in that it is a reflection of that essence and different from the essence in that each name and quality let's say the compassionate points to only one aspect of that essence except the name allah in islamic tradition it is said that the name allah encompasses all divine names and qualities it's not just one aspect it encompasses, it encapsulates all the divine names and qualities. And again, according to Islam, Prophet Muhammad is the manifestation of the divine name Allah. So to summarize, the essential uh, prophethood is that of the intellect. And the intellect is the reality of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Essentially and in reality, he is the first prophet. And considering the form, considering the corporeal form, he is the last his reality is the eternal prophethood. And other prophets are manifestations, are aspects of that grand eternal prophethood. This is uh, where the saying from the prophet of Islam comes in. He said, uh, I was the prophet when Adam was between water and dirt. But technically, and looked at it from um, corporeal life, Adam was the first prophet. But he's saying that I was a prophet back then. He's pointing to the essential prophethood. Next, we have Ahad dar mime Ahmad gasht zahir. Dar in door of Balamat in Ahir, the Ahmad ta had yik mim fargast. Jahani and dar in yik mim gargast. So, first, the literal meaning, which is not going to make much, much sense. I have to open this up. Ahad appeared, was manifested in the M of Ahmad, Ahad, God, Ahmad, the Prophet. In the circle, the first came as the last, or in the essence of the last, we could say. The difference between Ahmad and Ahad is only one M, that is between the name, the divine name Ahad and the Prophet's name Ahmad is an M. A whole world is absorbed into this one M. Now, this is a little bit difficult to explain because uh, it's a play on words in Farsi. Now, 
there are two names here Ahad Ahmad Ahad is a divine name that refers that points to the essence so it's an essential name Ahmad is one of the names of the Prophet of Islam so um, here is the difference the difference between Ahad and Ahmad is that M in English in Farsi you say Mim so M is pronounced as Mim so the only difference between Ahad and Ahmad is that Mim and um, when that M is connected to the word before and after it it is like a circle which is here the author is using uh, using it symbolically he says the difference between Ahad God and Ahmad the Prophet is that circle what is that circle and what is he playing on let's open that a little bit so um, other than the literal meaning uh, between the name the divine name Ahad and uh, the prophetic name Ahmad uh, the difference being that M symbolically that M we said is a circle and it designates the circle of existence which we have been discussing in uh, the previous and this episode the circle of existence that started from Ahad from the divine essence the manifestation that came down brought all the plurality got to the human being as the reference point and from here the ascending arc started uh, from which a journey from which the human being started to go back to the origin to the fatherland um, so the circular motion is represented is designated by that circular m that is the only difference between the name ahad and ahmad and here the author said ahad darmim ahmad gashd zahir ahad god appeared manifested himself in the m of ahmad that is the real manifestation of Ahad the real manifestation of God is the reality of Ahmad is the reality of the Prophet so from the divine essence the Muhammadan reality the intellect the first intellect capital is manifested and his reality is the real manifestation of the essence of the divine essence and all the other entities be them prophets or humans or other entities are basically reflections of this reality so there is a rank here the divine manifestation from the essence the reality of the prophet muhammad has created and the manifestation of his reality is the plurality of the individuals people entities that we see in this world and lahiji here makes this interesting interpretation he says um in everybody's form in this world there is the manifested the manifested reality of the prophet muhammad sallallahu so back to the poem um, the second part of the poem said that in door in the circle the first came as the last or could also be read in the circle the first came as the essence of the last and we said in the circle of existence the first that is the intellect the first intellect the Muhammadan revelation the Muhammadan reality came as the last and the last is human being that is uh, the intellect became the essence of the human being the first became the essence of the last that is the reality of the intellect was manifested as the human being looked at it differently um, the first came as the last and the last and the first got together and got perfected through human being through the perfect man in Ibn Aramian term terminology the next two lines say now I'm not going to get into the literal translation which cannot be transferred and translated actually so I'm going to get into the philosophical meaning uh, so what these two lines are saying is um, the end of this journey comes to him that is Prophet Muhammad and uh, he is the inviter that is the inviter uh, to the Almighty to be able to interpret the second line um, let's consider these two terms Hal Maqam Hal literally means state 
the mystical state that you get when you're walking in this path, which, which is uh, temporary. It comes, it goes, like, like happiness, like temporary happiness. You have it, then it goes away. And, but if you persist on this path, if you continue on this path, the, 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 the states come and go for a while. And after that, they subsist, they stay there. So here, instead of the word states, we use um, station. So you have got to a station in which that in which those states are fixed in you you have them continuously they don't go away so uh, the sheikh is using uh, the word maqam he says the prophet's station is let's say let's see what it is he says it is jam a jam um, in the beginning uh, the traveler the traveler on this journey um, when he or she looks at the entities uh, the corporeal entities in the world he sees otherness that is he sees the corporeal entities as distinct from god there is god and there are corporeal entities but uh, walking through this path uh, the travel gets uh, to a level the mystic gets to a level where even looking at the entities looking at the pluralities he or she does not see those entities as distinct from god looking at them he sees the manifestation of certain divine names and qualities through those corporeal entities it's not that they are distinct from god those are nothing but the reflections of the names and qualities and the traveler gets to a level where he or she uh, sees this so uh, basically uh, to, 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 to rephrase this whole thing the traveler sees but god now the second part of that line says jamal uh, jam fazaya sham jamas that is uh, the perfection of the names and qualities that is the reality of the prophet is the leading light for other people we get to this episode's last line شده او پیشو دلها جمله از پی گرفته دست دلها دامنه وی He is in the forefront of this path and everybody walks through this path following his footsteps through the light that he carries on this path um, the way is illuminated and we are all able to walk to get to the destination In the following lines um, the Sheikh starts talking about mystics and what role they play. But this video has gotten already long enough. I'm not gonna make it longer than this. We're gonna keep this uh, to the next episode. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I did. This is uh, one of my favorite parts of this tremendously valuable book. If you liked the video, um, pressing that like button will help the channel. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.